Hello! So today we're taking a look at the Freedom Fox in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I bought this from Orbex last night, so before we go any further let's just go and have a little look at Orbex Central and have a look at the project. So you actually get more than just the Freedom Fox with this kit. You get several variations of the aeroplane, lots of liveries and lots of custom scenery as well. So within the kit you get you can see here the various versions are detailed. You get also a number of mods for the aircraft to improve it so you can see the features are quite rich. So let's go and jump into the simulator and take a look at it. So just looking at the modeling if you've not seen the Freedom Fox before it's based originally the project's originally based on Trent Palmer's aircraft but if you go and look around the aircraft, the, the, the various other versions of it, they are similar but they are not the same. So this is the Fox 2, but just look at the quality of the modelling. It's like looking at a photograph wherever you look at the aircraft. I would say the only thing slightly wrong with it is all of the liveries I've looked at were kind of showroom shiny new, other than scratches on the glass. So, which is nice because it makes you feel like you just bought a brand new aeroplane. But it's, uh, yeah, it's it's very cool though, just look at the quality of the modelling of some of the 3D assets, it's just stunning. You know, it just, the more, the closer you look at it, the more real it becomes. <laughs> Even the tyres are just next level. And of course then you get, like I said, round to scratches on the glass. So if we go and go and look closely. Can you see those scratches? <laughs> it's absolutely insane. It even goes as far as, if I can get the drone camera to behave, we'll have to go on the other side. Yeah, if we look inside the engine block, for example, you can see the engine through there. It's something else. And if we come down and come into the cockpit, there are even finger marks in the upholstery it's absolutely crazy yeah you can see finger marks where it's been grabbed as people have held their balance to get in anyway enough gazing at the 3d model let's go and see how the airplane actually behaves and maybe have a look at this wonderful scenery this is one of the sceneries they give you which is a campground and it's really really cool there's like various small planes with tents outside them. There's a custom windsock over there. If we go up in the air, you can see there are markers on the ground to set out the boundaries of a runway and various boulders that you have to be careful of if you're going to be flying in and out of here. Okay, so let's go and jump inside the aeroplane and leave the drone camera behind for a few minutes and have a look at this. So you can see the modelling inside is almost photographic as well. It's quite amusing, really. The closer you look, the more you kind of shake your head and think this is just next level. So there's various custom 3D assets. Some of them are mods. You can change the colours. And if you click on things, you can swap them out for people or bags, things like that. And obviously there's stuff in the back as well. But yeah, the, the quality of the modelling is just next level. OK. So how do we get things started? So if we go and turn the master switch on and then we go and turn on the fuel shutoff valve. There is no mixture control in this aircraft. It's obviously got an automatic carburetor system of some kind. I've not read too much about it yet. but And as I said, this is the Fox 2, which is one of the variants. It's one of the more powerful variants. So we go and turn on the fuel pumps to get the engine started. We turn on the magnetos. We turn on the start power we turn on lights outside to warn people we're about to start the engine we crack the throttle open and then we hit the starter button and the and i didn't have the parking brake on you make sure you have the parking brake on you saw it, it erupted into life so we'll go and close the door while we're at it now we didn't shout clear either did we <laughs> although that would be a bit odd me sitting in the study here at home shouting clear across the house um okay so we can go and now we have the engine running we can turn the fuel pumps off we can turn the start power back off we can turn the avionics on now 
and we'll just wait for the avionics to come up and it's come up there are some mods on the g3000s here to show custom data that's specific to the freedom fox which is really nice um, otherwise you can program flights in exactly the way you should be able to in the g3000 so you know all the menu screens are still there um, you can do everything you would expect Let's go and turn some lights on and go flying, shall we? So we'll turn the strobes on, turn the landing lights on. There's wigwag lights as well. So if we go and look outside, I'm not quite sure what the wigwag lights refers to. So let's have a look at the end of those wings. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway. We've got internal cabin lights as well, obviously, in, in the daytime, they're not gonna make a lot of sense. Let's come back off that parking brake, open the throttle gently, raise the flaps and then drop them back down to the first position and then go racing off down the field. Somebody just loaded in. Did you see that stutter then? Somebody loaded in in the aeroplane at the same scenery. You probably saw that I was here. This is the, one of the perils of having multiplayer on sometimes when you're recording videos. So you can see, look at the climb performance. We've just climbed probably about 30 degrees out. So just looking at the performance here, if we just raise the flaps, which I've already done, you have a very wide performance range indicated on the indicated airspeed. So Although this is one of the faster variants, you know, it can, it can fly quite a lot faster than some of the others. Um, it's still quite amusing that you'll notice the marker on the indicated airspeed is, to, is your stall speed with no flaps. If we go and extend the flaps, so we'll just wait. So if we, so we're within flap range. So it's saying we can do about 30 knots without flaps and there we go we dropped a wing so let's go and drop the flaps and it remarkably it doesn't actually make a lot of difference to the stall speed but it does change the handling markedly in terms of what the airplane can get away with so you can see it's a lot more stable for a lot longer notice you can catch it if you're quick on the controls you can catch wing drops because the control deflections are so strong. So we're just toodling along, look, at 37 knots, which is stunning, really. Stalling and stalling. So obviously the stock in trade of this aircraft is bush flying. So you can fly low and slow and go exploring and have all sorts of fun with it. So we'll show some examples of that. Luckily, because we have GPS, we can see where the campground is in relation to us. So we'll just circle the campground as we're flying around, so we don't have far to go back. So you can see it's very, very stable. I mean, OK, I've got calm weather today, which is helping. But you can very happily just toodle along riverbeds and fields and have all sorts of fun and the aeroplane absolutely behaves itself. There's a slight amount of torque roll when you jam the throttle open but hardly anything to speak of. It's just good fun. I think that's the takeaway from it. So when you look at it from outside you can see the, the campground behind us. It's just really good fun. So how do we go for a, an approach back into the campground? So there's the campground. Just descending down. If we chuck the flaps out, we'll have some more drag, which will help. Side slip to lose speed and height. 
because the, the airplane weighs almost nothing. And there we go, back on the field. Help if we looked where we were going, of course. Let's go and find our tent, which was over here somewhere. Yeah, there's our tent. I love that they've put so many boulders in the custom scenery as well. So there we go, we'll just put the parking brake on. So to switch the aeroplane back off, there's obviously various options. You can start the engine of fuel, turn the magnetos off, turn the lights off. Um, we turned off the fuel pump earlier and then we can just turn off the avionics and the master and then all the switches and levers you'd expect to work in the aeroplane work. So it's just really, really nicely done. So in the next video I record, I will be taking a look at the campground mod, which lets you go way further than you can see around here. So Parallel 42 have really done a number on these various add-ons to increase the immersiveness of, you know, going flying and camping out in the middle of nowhere en route. So finding somewhere to land instead of relying on an airfield. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. So that's the Kit Fox for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and you can find it from Orbex or Freedom Fox. Sorry, you can find it on Orbex, and it's about forty-four Australian dollars, which comes out at thirty US dollars or twenty-four pounds at the moment. So, hopefully you enjoyed that, and I'll see you again soon.